As the world's thirst for energy increases, so too does the threat of rising CO2 emissions. At the same time, technological advances and investment are pushing carbon capture and storage from demonstrative phase towards deployment. Some CCS opponents point to currently high development costs and so possible diversion of funding from renewable energy sources and the continuing reliance on fossil fuels. Supporters, on the other hand, see an opportunity to cut emissions swiftly, effectively and, long term, relatively cheaply. And unless the public and policymakers alike accept a variety of new low-carbon technologies, the EU risks failing to reach its 2050 targets. CCS is actually a very important technology for a decarbonised economy. The IEA projects that if we're to do this at least cost, then CCS really has to account for about 20% of the emission reductions. We also need to understand that CCS is actually the only solution for emissions from a wide range of industrial applications, including steel making, fertiliser production and cement production. When you look at the overall challenge that we face, we need more energy and less CO2. That is the big mix that we're trying to crack right now. My fear is if we don't get CCS into the marketplace, demonstrated and commercially available, we've got two potential outcomes. The first is we miss our 2050 targets. The second is we make our targets, but only because the lights went out. Big barrier right now is getting the scale of demonstration program that we need to deliver these cost savings and breadth of application. The reality is that we've seen that the probability of getting the 10 to 12 demonstration plants we said were necessary to fully validate all the different combinations of CO2 capture, transport and storage have very much fallen by the wayside. We estimate now anywhere between three to four demos perhaps. We need to support every single one of those projects to make sure they are quality projects and they get across the line. In terms of investor confidence in the CCS technology, I think we're almost too early to be able to see that. Investors like to see things that are in the deployment phase, but we're still in this demonstration phase where companies in association with governments are jointly proving the technology works, jointly driving down the cost. And then when investors see that this is an available form of energy that's cost competitive and clean, we're going to start to see the investors come forward. I think investors are actually looking for a bit more policy certainty than they have today. If I look in Europe, what you can see is that the carbon price is very depressed and we're very unsure of what the forward price is. I think that makes it difficult for investors. We also see that renewable energy is treated a little differently to CCS and yet they're both seeking the same outcome, that's to decarbonise our economy. Well, the European Commission has a crucial role to play in that it sets the agenda at the European level. CCS has a really essential role to play in supporting the decarbonisation of uh, energy intensive and process industries which are dependent on fossil fuels. CCS is not a well-known technology. Um, a re recent Eurobarometer study on it, which was the largest of its kind, showed that only one in ten Europeans actually claim to know and understand what CCS is. Well, I think this nimbyism, or not in my backyard, uh, is a challenging issue for a whole range of technologies, not just CCS. I think it's human nature that uh, people are a little concerned about the deployment of large-scale technology that they're not familiar with. There's a lot of negativity surrounding CCS at present and a sense in the media that um, CCS has problems and is too expensive. My sense is rather different in that the technical base for CCS continues to develop very positively. What's most important is that if it's not here in the short term, it won't ever be here in the long term. So the important part right now is to get it into the mix now so that it's deployable in 2030 and all part of the mix to ensure we get to our 2050 targets. The IPCC uh, back in 2005 found that there's at least 1,700 gigatons of storage. Now when we look at the IEA's projection for how much storage is required for CCS, we find it needs about 145 gigatons by 2050. So there's an awful lot more capacity out there than what currently is projected as required to mid-century. This is actually a long-term solution. We face collectively a real challenge in rebooting the CCS debate to focus on how CCS can bring value added to the European economy. We actually need all of these technologies to make sure we can decarbonise our economies around the world. And so renewables play an important part, but so too must CCS.
So, as policymakers and investors debate the challenges and benefits, are all stakeholders engaged? And what will be the long-term role of CCS as we move towards a low-carbon future? Have your say at commentvisions.com, on LinkedIn and via Twitter.